This is a bit of a precautionary video this morning um, regarding investments in the Philippines. There is a lot of Ponzi schemes, there is a lot of pyramid schemes and predominantly it's younger people that are pushing these things. Um, I had it with a, load, a telephone load business. Now the, the business itself was viable, it's just the fact they hadn't built any infrastructure. They were relying on old infrastructure which made it impossible to actually um, load the phones. The peak hours it would lock out and stuff. But the business was sold on a pyramid system where basically you get one person to invest X amount and then you get a cut of that, the person above you gets a cut, etc, etc. Which is fine if the infrastructure was invested in as much as they did on the sales. Um, in the end I just binned it and advised people not to touch it. Uh, did I lose any money? Mm, I broke about even, but the problem is I don't like attaching my name to such a duff business. So with that one I sort of said, don't touch it, don't touch it with a barge pile. I can't remember the name of the load company. But if you're doing anything like this, try and speak to other people that are already doing something. Um, because they'll say, well, it, it, what happened, you know, like with that, how's it loaded peak hours? It's, oh, it's a bit slow, etc. Because they've just bought old tap, they bought old Chinese equipment that has been um, upgraded in China, then bought all the obsolete stuff. That's the sort of stuff that goes on quite regularly in the Philippines. Uh, also, with the ships, this is what I was on about yesterday about the ferry disasters. A lot of those ships weren't seaworthy in the first place because they're already supposed to be going for retirement. But the other side of this is it's on the increase. And I remember back in, when was it, 2008, 2009, about the legacy scheme. Now, the legacy scheme collapsed with a debts of estimated about 30 billion pesos, and there was 130,000 people money. That scheme was similar to, what's his name, Bernie, I think it's Bernie Eggleston, the, the guy in the, the US that did similar. Because um, what they were doing is they were basically taking, the, dealing with rural banks, where people get loans for farming, loans for rice, small loans, high risk, high interest rate. But also it was built on a pyramid scheme. It was built on double your money in a year. Get, um, and then it sort of like went, oh, you'll get half your money in a year, and then it started becoming longer and longer periods as obviously the money starting to dry up because it was obviously all being pushed up the top and being f filtered off. It was never a viable business. The banks themselves had actually complained about it, but it was sort of shut up. Um, De Los Angeles was the original founder of that legacy scheme. Um, he's dead now. Are, are people going to see the money? I doubt it. But this is another thing I want to cover. Because although he was the ringleader as such, it doesn't mean that he was the, the kingpin as such. Because what you can have is, for example, if I was a bit rogue, I would quite happily put a, a puppet up to be the guy driving the Ferraris and everything else and sit in the background because you're unlikely to get noticed you'll just be another investor and that may have been what happened you know the the people that did set up were the organized people may not even have been involved with the um, people that are running it as such because they do it in the background it's how smart criminals operate but the other side of this being, I want to talk about my experience with somebody trying to get me to invest in Legacy um, back between 2007 and 2008. It was just between the two, the two years um, as the start of 2008, end of 2007. So what, what actually happened was I got invited to go for a beer and have a chat with this guy about his investments. And he was talking about the Legacy scheme. I had the spare capital. I could afford to risk it. Um, but when I looked at it, I couldn't work out how they'd actually make the business work. The business model didn't work for me. I can't see how it was profitable. So I thought I'll sit on it and went to the UK for two, three months, then come back. And I was sort of thinking, well, should I or shouldn't I? I've got to make a decision now. 
and a week after, or one or two weeks later, the whole thing had collapsed. But the the point being is the pressure sales was all, oh well, don't worry about it. It's insured anyway by the banks. That inv insurance, by the way, is for stopping the average person become a victim of bankrupt banks. It's not an insurance policy. It's to it's a scheme where basically if your bank went bankrupt, you they will cover you, the government will cover that loss for you know up to I think it's half a million pesos. So it's not an insurance scheme as such that is utilized for bad investments, but they'd found a loophole and we're abusing it to the max. The next thing is, while I'm discussing it upstairs with this British expat, his wife is approaching my wife, asking if she's got access to my money and all these other things, which instantly made it something I would want nothing to do with. Um, for me, that's criminal activity. Uh, when people are trying to access your money without your authority and rights, it's not legal. Um, my, I mean, I've got a very good wife, so my wife just tells me this stuff anyway. But the point being is, after it all went sour, this expat threatened people with legal action and all this other stuff, and quickly retracted, saying, I didn't say this, didn't do that, da da da. Had lots of problems with other expats because they trusted him. Um, and I know watching um, Britain, the Philippines, He's on about some investment with some expat and his wife or something to do with some law degree, etc. Don't invest in other people's ideas. Um, unless you actually know them and come from the same industry or whatever. Don't even invest in somebody you know well unless you actually know what they're doing and you know they know what they're doing. Because everyone can sell a duff idea. I mean, most ideas fail in the first six months even for people that know what they're doing. So be aware, if you're going to invest in something, invest in yourself. Find something you're good at and you know can make money. Um, all these things relating to the legacy scandal, etc., has meant that in the Philippines, one in 100 Filipinos has been scammed with a Ponzi or pyramid scheme. That's one in a hundred. That's one percent of the entire population of the Philippines has been scammed. And the way technology is moving, as more and more people get online, etc., it's normally the younger generation that are doing this for quick money, quick returns, quick savings, etc., etc. You'll make money. You'll get your money back in a few months. Blah blah blah. And the fact is, they trust these people, and then they're ripped off big time. But I just wanted to sort of share that with everybody, just so you can sit there and have a think. If somebody's put something towards you, is it the right investment for you, or are they going to rip you off? All right, thanks for watching.